Mary hath chosen the best part. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The Greek fathers speak of three separate people. Luke 7, then the sister of Martha and Lazarus, from Luke 10 and John 11, and Mary Magdalene. But all the Latin fathers say the three are the same one, Mary Magdalene, all three of them. And so this I agree with. One reason why they think that Luke didn't say the name much of Mary Magdalene when she described, he described her as a sinner that anointed the feet of the Lord was it for the same reason why he didn't name Matthew, rather called him Levi, so as to have discretion, not to be putting the sins all in the clotheslines for all to see, but since they were still living, to have a, a sense of respect for them. Uh, and this probably explains why uh, the name is not mentioned in immediate relation with this, the sinfulness of the person. And so therefore the French tradition is much more reliable because the Greek fathers also suggest that Mary Magdalene went off with the Blessed Virgin and died in Ephesus. Um, but the French tradition is much more reliable, um, especially since the Roman breviary and um, the martyrology uh, speak of this fact that she went off to France in Marseille. And she spent 30 years in a cave in penance, uh, praying and winning so many graces. And so she had retired to a hill in Saint Baume. And when she gave herself up to this life of penance, when the time of her death arrived, she was carried by angels to Aix and into the oratory of Saint Maximinus, where she received the Viaticum. And her body then once died, she lied, she, lay, she was laid in an oratory constructed by St. Maximinus at Villa. And somewhere along the way she was brought back to her original place. In 1279, Charles II, King of Naples, erected a convent at La Sainte Baume for the Dominicans and the shrine was found intact with an inscription stating uh, why they were hidden. And in the year 1600, the relics were placed in a sarcophagus sent by Pope Clement VIII. And the head of St. Mary Magdalene being placed in a separate vessel. And in 1814, the church of La Sainte Baume was wrecked by the French revolutionists. But then it was restored in 1822 and the grotto was consecrated afresh and the head of the saint now lies there what has lain so long and where it was, where has been the center of so many pilgrimages from years and years and years. Now all of this, the French tradition is the true one because as we know, the church has four, four marks, or as Pope Pius XII will add, a slip in a fifth mark of the church uh, being Roman. Um, but those great marks of the church, the church apostolic, holy one. Uh, and so therefore, when she's praying, we cannot say that she's mistaken. You know, she, especially in those oremuses that we have that has been handed down to us from centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries. Even in Novus Ordo, they have to change because they try to cater to the Greeks, you know, so they're changing all the liturgy all over the place. So uh, even the gospel today for Novus Ordo, they will read the uh, Mary Magdalene going to the tomb. And, uh, so so the, in other words, the whole tradition of the church is not afraid to say Luke, Luke 7 that we have to read here for the gospel. Uh, and then the Oremos even says specifically uh, that she is the brother of Lazarus, <laughs> right there in the Oremos. You know, so if you say that Oremos is wrong, then we have massive problems with the church. Uh, the Oremoses are tremendously infallible, and God is giving all the graces 
Uh, and so our forefathers cannot be wrong uh, having that Roman tradition. So anyway, uh, a, b- a bunch of hodgepodge just saying nothing here. Uh, but as we come to communion, as we know exactly who that Mary Magdalene is through tradition, uh, let us hear those words of Christ as he's coming to our spiritual living room, so to speak, as that first time we there when he had Mary at his feet teaching her. And then as the screams are coming out of the kitchen, uh, let us hear those words of Christ to, uh, to Martha. Oh, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and art troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary, and Mary hath chosen the best part. Uh, so you may be the juggling sister who can juggle all kinds of chores perfectly and the best sister and But if we do not have this interior life, then our Lord will be a little disappointed. He wants, he wants, he wants your heart. He wants you to be with him. So as we come to communion, let us listen that our Lord pronounces those things to us. Be contemplative like my Mary. I I favored her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.